Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name's uh, Alex, as you know, um, and I'll be today one of your speakers. So let's begin. Not everything is as it seems. At least is what my mother taught me. This fact is more true the younger you are. When you're younger, you experience the world in these kind of false truths in this way that we see animals through colorful picture books or we learn about different places through elementary. But we don't get to experience those things. And we've built a world around us that's built in false experiences. And so when you actually see those animals and visit those places, you get this awakening feeling, this true realization of the world around you. My first awakening that I could remember when I was about five and it was when my mother was driving in the front seat on the highway to who knows where, but what I remember importantly was watching as the rain hit the glass and the sun burning, and I saw it for the first time, a rainbow. It was so beautiful. I'd never seen anything like it. Admittedly, it was a pretty wimpy rainbow. You could just barely see it, but it was so beautiful and so stunning, I couldn't take my eyes off it. It dashed across the depressing sky and brought sunshine to the world around us. I saw rainbows before on Lucky Charm boxes on TV and TV shows, but glazing upon it for the first time, it was like this great revelation. And still to this day, I wonder, why, why, and why was it so beautiful? In 1982, Pulitzer Prize winner Alice, Alice Walker was the, uh, the author of the classic novel, The Color Purple, was the first person to coin the term colorism. In her words, colorism is the prejudicial or preferential treatment of another person of the same race solely on their color. A more later and academically accepted definition would be a practice of discrimination against individuals of differing skin tones, uh, but uh, typically among, but not limited to, the same ethnic group or racial group. Alice Walker was the first to use colorism in her collection of writings made throughout her career from 1966 to 1982 in a work called in search of mother's gardens. In part three of the book, in a, cha in a chapter titled named, if the present looks like the past, then what does the future look like? She addresses the coping and self-worth and self-respect black women have to face and goes through the account of telling of vastly different experiences between two black women of differing skin tones and how a light-skinned woman was much more privileged and revered in American society. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why does colorism exist? And to answer this question, we must turn back the clock a little bit and learn some quick history. Our modern conception of slavery, or at least r racism, comes from the transatlantic slave trade. As white colonials began enslaving other human beings for profit, they began trying to attempt to justify the subjugation and mass murder of other human beings. And so, as the way to divide the people and their own human beings, they created artificial artificial divides, keeping them from the enslaved, which produce a racial hierarchy that the whites were superior to the blacks. But as time moves forward, we watch as the white colonials feed the growing plantation class in America. And this is important because the white colonials did not have close connections with the men and women they brutally captured, but the plantation owners did. They lived with their slaves. And so this would lead and result into more sexual assault and rape. And, as, and in, in this forced dissemination, Light-skinned people were, light-skinned enslaved people were born, and they broke the racial hierarchy because they were neither black nor white. <coughs> so they began to make a new hierarchy, a hierarchy of whiteness. The whiter you are, the better you are. As a result, light-skinned people received less demanding labor and got to work in master's house, the first existence of colorism disparity. So, so now, eventually, slavery ended in America. But after Reconcession, we begin to see a new era in the United States, the Jim Crow era, and, and the adoption of the paper brown bag test. The paper brown bag test is a test to see whether your skin was lighter or darker than a paper brown bag. If you were lighter, you could access social institutions like churches or be able to join sororities. But if you were darker than a paper brown bag, then you were denied access. This decreased the social interaction between light-skinned people and dark-skinned people, and the gap became even wider. As black people entered the workplace, lighter-skinned individuals were able to access job much easier because they were perceived to be more intelligent. And now you might be thinking to yourself, how can a repressed group of people be privileged? 
Now this is an extreme hot take, so be prepared for this. Racism does not make sense. I know, very, very radical, very, very radical, but it's true, and it's a sad truth. And this sad truth, it still affects us today. But how do you know that I'm telling you the truth? How do you know that I'm not trying to indoctrinate you into my radical leftist agenda? Witness. Indeed, I did cite my sources, so you know. Uh, this, I do this to show that there will always be people who try to label that the, cover, the suffering and misery of people of color is just information or propaganda, and it's truly disgusting me in countless ways. I bring these facts and logic in the flesh so you may witness it yourself. This is reality, and you can't call reality fake news. So what does the science have to say about colorism? Well, research papers done in 2015 and 2018 show a wide disparities between black and so-called light-skinned people and their experiences in America. People who have lighter skin are perceived to be more smart and more beautiful as compared to darker-skinned people, and they experience fewer racist acts of aggression. And it has also been statistically shown that people with lighter skin receive a higher income in, in many categories. The interracial gap between the, well, let's uh, make sure you guys see that quotation. It states in itself, the racial gap between white workers and black workers with light skin shade is only 6% and is not statistically significant. The racial gap widens to 26.5% when whites are compared to blacks with a medium complexion and widens even further to 34.5% of whites to blacks with a darker skin tone. These wage gaps are statistically significant and, the, and it is shown that in addition black and light skin people have earned significantly higher wages than black people with medium skin colors and black skin that are darker in shades. We know for a definitive fact that white skin people receive a higher amount of income compared to people, uh, compared to white people, but when we compare people that are darker skin colored, that gap widens to over a third. Now to put this into perspective, an average white salary in America is $76,000. Now if you just do a math, times that by 0 0.3, you get a subtraction of $26,000. Now, you might not understand what that amount of money means, but to put that into perspective, the average rent in America is $12,000. So a darker skinned person receives, uh, on average, every year, loses about two years worth of rent every single year. Just imagine having less food, less water, and less utilities, and other basic necessities just because your skin is a shade darker. If you were paying attention to what I was talking about before, I said that light-skinned people were perceived to be more beautiful. There's nothing beautiful about racism. Around the world globally, widening products or uh, industries are over $20 billion. Who knew racism could be so profitable? We might not see enslavers or white colonists today, but there are still people sitting in their steel towers trying to divide us. I say to hell with this. Do not let anybody tell you that you are not beautiful because of your race. Do not let anybody tell you that you are somehow deserve less because of your race. Do not let anybody tell you that you are less of a person because of your race. The fight in America for justice has not ended and will not end until people of color are treated like people. We may not be at peace, but we need to continue the fight because after this month ends, the fight still continues because we are all brothers and sisters. All brothers and sisters, under this one God, under this one nation, under this united nation, we stand united. That is the founding dream. When I swore why rainbows are so beautiful is because of their colors. I preach about not being colorblind, but rather loving to accept our differences and standing together. That rainbow that I saw years ago was not just a rainbow. It was the American dream. It was King's dream. Even if it was small, even if it was meager, if you could just barely see it, it shines. That's what it is. That's the American dream. I believe that if we stand together, no matter all of our past flaws, but if we stand, we are able to shine. And so for the fights, will you stand with me?
that's my speech, and I hope you guys have a lovely day.